In this lesson, we will learn how to perform the hypothesis test for the difference of population means for paired samples. The owner of a chain of mini markets wants to compare the sales performance of two of her stores, store one and store two. Sales can vary considerably depending on the day of the week and the season of the year, so she decides to eliminate such effects by making sure to record each store sales on the same sample of days. After choosing a random sample of 12 days, she records the sales in dollars for each store on these days, as shown in Table 1. Based on these data, can the owner conclude at the 0.05 level of significance that the mean daily sales of two stores differ? Answer this question by performing a hypothesis test regarding mu sub d, which is mean with the letter d subscript, meaning uh, mean of the difference data. The population mean daily sales difference between the two stores. Assume that this population of differences, store 1 minus store 2, is normally distributed. Perform a two-tailed test, then fill in the table below. Carry your intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and round your answers as specified in the table. First of all, notice that we are provided with the raw data, records from store 1 and store 2 provided to us in the table. So here is the data from store 1 and store 2. We also are provided the difference data in um, this order, store 1 sales minus store 2 sales, and the numbers are recorded for us. This difference set is the one we're going to perform tests on, and because it's um, really one set of numbers, we're not working with two symbols at the same time, we are going to perform a t-test on just one variable, which is the difference between the two sales. To set up our hypothesis, we need to go back to the question. The question is the following. At 500th level of significance, can we conclude that the mean daily sales of two stores differ, which means they either are same or different? If these uh, sets of numbers are same on average, then the difference will be zero. That is my null hypothesis, that mean of the difference data is zero, which means sales in both stores are about the same. Alternatively, mu sub d could be not equal to zero, which means there is some difference between the two sales. On average, again, I'm stating my alpha of 5% and I'm now are going to find the critical value t sub 0 0.025. This particular example is asking you for critical value approach to solving this um, hypothesis test question. 5% uh, alpha for two-tailed test means there's 2.5% um, of data in the left tail and 2.5% of data in the right tail, and there are two critical values symmetric with respect to the center of zero, which we need to find. I'm applying inverse t, so that there is a 97.5% of data to the left of this specific t value. I am indicating the location of this t value with respect to this uh, amount of area of 2.5% uh, in the right tail by this subscript. t sub 0 0.025 equals inverse t of 97.5% of area to the left of it and 11 degrees of freedom. Remember, degrees of freedom is found by taking the sample size minus one. So 12 minus one is 11. When you input this into uh, TI-84, you get 2.201. Therefore, there are two um, critical values, negative 2.201 and positive 2.201. Now I'm going to use the t-test applied to list one and uh, the result Two values that I'm very interested in are t-value, the test statistic, came out to be 4.002, and p-value came out to be two um, thousands. Since we're using the critical value approach, I am interested in this question, can I reject the null hypothesis? In this case, because the, crit uh, the critical value is uh, separating 2.5% of area to the right and to the left, my job will be to identify where's my test statistic. Test statistic t came out to be 4.002, which is way right here, deep in the right tail, in the rejection region, definitely. 
So I'm going to reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic 4.002 happens to be definitely greater than the critical value of 2.201. Therefore, I conclude that we have enough evidence at alpha equals uh, 500th level of significance to conclude that the mean daily sales of two stores differ. Let's take a look at how we can perform this test using TI-84. First of all, make sure that your data is entered into one of your lists. And here's my data that I had in the third column. Now I perform the t-test on that data. So um, make sure to choose the data setting for this test. We're comparing to the difference of zero. Make sure to enter the right list where your data is stored. Not equal to is the two-tailed test I choose. Once I press calculate, this is the information I have. Please notice the t-value test statistic is 4.002, just as I uh, wrote on the previous slide. p-value is 2 thousandths when rounded to three decimal places as requested. And uh, therefore, um, in the table on the right side of the slide, you can see my answer that I inputted on Alex. Um, also notice that Alex will ask you for degrees of freedom uh, specified somewhere, so you'll have to enter that information over here. Um, we are concluding that, yes, the mean uh, daily sales of two stores differ. Now let's take a look at one more example. This time we will have a right tail test. A consumer products testing group is evaluating two competing brands of tires, brand 1 and brand 2. Though the two brands have been comparable in the past, some technological advances were recently made in brand 2 manufacturing process and the consumer group is testing to see if brand 2 will outperform brand 1. Tread wear can vary considerably depending on the type of car, and the group is trying to eliminate this effect by installing the two brands on the same random sample of 8 cars. In particular, each car has one tire of each brand on its front wheels, with half of the cars chosen at random to have brand 1, on the left front wheel and rest to have brand 2 there. After all of the cars are driven over the standard test course for 20,000 miles, the amount of tread wear in inches is recorded, as shown in Table 1. Based on these data, can the consumer group conclude at the 0.05 level of significance that the mean tread wear of brand 1 exceeds that of brand 2? Answer this question by performing a hypothesis test regarding mu sub d, which is mu with a letter d subscript, the population mean difference in tread wear for two brands of tire. Assume that this population of differences, brand 1 minus brand 2, is normally distributed. Perform a one tail test, then fill in the table below. Carry your intermediate computations to at least three decimal places and run your answers as specified in the table. We're going to perform this test with the help of TI-84. First of all, this again is the case of paired samples because the tires are on the same set of eight cars. We need to um, enter the data, the differenced data, brand 1 minus brand 2, which is located in this last column, into one of the lists on your calculator. I labeled it as list 1, but it could be in any list you um, have uh, entered this information. Now let's uh, identify our hypothesis statements. Please notice the question is, uh, can we conclude that the mean tread wear of brand 1 exceeds that of brand 2? Exceeds means is greater, which means I'm going to assume that when I uh, take this set of numbers minus the second set of numbers, have first set being greater, at least that's my assumption, um, will produce positive uh, quantities. So I'm saying, is it true that the mean uh, difference is greater than zero? Well, of course, the null hypothesis will have to say the opposite, mu sub d will be less than or equal to zero. So I'm trying to find evidence to support the alternative hypothesis here. Uh, alpha is um, at 0 0.05 level of significance, so I state that. And uh, because I have a right tail test, I have a diagram right here saying 
there is some critical value T that separates 5% on the right from 95% on the left. Um, please notice, why do we use t-test? Just to remind you one more time how we make that decision. Well, notice the sample size is pretty small and there is no sign of sigma anywhere in the story. Nobody tells me what is the population standard deviation, which forces me into considering t-curves as basis for solving this hypothesis test. A one more statement that is very important is that um, the we assume that population of differences brand 1 minus brand 2 is normally distributed. With such a small sample, normality of the population is a must, and we have that um, statement given to us. So we are safe to use the t-test applied to this list. Okay, before I do the t-test though, let's find the critical value. Critical value is t sub 0 0.05, which is found by inverse t applied to 95% of area to the left of this mystery value t, and 7 is my degrees of freedom, because sample size 8 minus 1 gives me degrees of freedom 7. The calculator will give me 1.895, so on a t scale, this location is 1.895 t value, that separates 5% on the right, from 95% on the left. Now it's time to use the t-test, apply to list one where my data is stored, and uh, TI-84 will give me t equals to 4.201, that is my um, test statistic right here, and p-value is 0 0.002. This particular question, uh, Alex is asking that I solve it using the critical value approach. So I have this diagram copied from previous slide. I know that the critical value is 1.895 that separates 5% in critical region from 95% in the acceptance region. And notice because T statistic is such a huge number compared to 1.895, it's deep in the rejection region on the right side of 1.895. I state just that, 4.201 is greater than 1.895, which means I must reject null hypothesis because test statistic is in the rejection region. I conclude that we have evidence at alpha equals 0.05 significance level to conclude that the mean thread wear of brand 1 exceeds that of brand 2. Before we go to the next slide to see how we perform this test on TI-84, I would like to make a quick note that if you use a formula for a computing t statistic, here's that formula, t equals x bar minus mu sub zero over sample standard deviation s divided by square root of sample size n. To use this formula, you first need to apply um, one variable stat to the list um, where your data is stored because you need to know what x bar is and s is. They're not given to me. I have raw data to work with. Once you get these two quantities, you will have to round them as requested in this question to three decimal places. The fact that you're computing a test statistic with two rounded numbers in that formula will impact the outcome and it will be slightly different compared to what test statistics comes out to be using the t-test on TI-84. So I'm just mentioning that, that you are not worried about the difference. The difference will not be very significant and it will not impact your judgment or your decision whether to reject or accept the null hypothesis. But numbers here in the second and third place value may be a little different between uh, doing it using t-test or doing it using the formula, purely due to rounding right here. So just be aware of that. Now let's take a look at our TI-84. First, I make sure my data is in one of the lists. In my case, it's in list one. Then I go to stat and to choose t-test. Data is the way I'm gonna run this test. I enter the information, mu sub zero is zero, list one, frequency one, right tail test, press calculate, these are the quantities that we saw previously. This is how we come up with them. And finally, on the right-hand side here, you see the table that Alex will request. 
you will need to enter your null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, decide which type of statistic you have, in this case, t value, because you're working with t curves. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, 8 minus 1, or 7 in this case. My test statistic is 4.226. Now, please notice this number is different than the one right here. That's what I meant um, when I said that if you use the formula, you're going to get a slightly different number. This number I got when I used the formula. This is the one I get uh, when I use the TI-84 t-test. They're both will be accepted by Alex. Why? Because Alex always says around to at least three decimal places, which means if you are more precise, your number will be more accurate and it will take it one way or another, whether you round or you don't. The more precision, the better number you get, but this one rounded to three decimal places will still be accepted. We are concluding after we are comparing the test statistic to the critical value that um, there is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and the consumer group can conclude that the mean thread wear of brand one definitely exceeds that of brand two. So I say yes.